Welcome to another video from ITSEC Hub. Today's video is on how to decrypt HTTPS traffic with Wireshark. If you have not subscribed to ITSEC Hub, please subscribe for more informative videos. So we will go straight to the video. HTTPS is the secure version of HTTP. So it is a protocol that secures the communication between the web browser and the web server. So the HTTP data in the form of request and response is encrypted by a session key which is generated at the TLS handshake process and sent to the web server. So this is not in plain text or clear text anymore. So anyone who intercept cannot read it, so they see only a jargon. So if you want to know more about the TLS handshake process, how the HTTPS is working, you can watch my other video on TLS 1.2 handshake process explained with Wireshark. So this is a step by step tutorial, which is very easy for you to learn and understand. Now the traffic key is generated at web browser and then sent to the web server. So you can intercept this traffic at any point during the transmission between web browser and the web server and analyze it. But for easy demonstration, I will capture the traffic at the client side. We will use the environmental variable SSL keylog file to store the session keys generated at the web browser and the web server's communication and we will use Wireshark to decrypt the capture using the session keys. So we will go to the terminal in our Kali Linux box. Now we will open the terminal and type export SSL keylog file equals the path for the keylog file. So we will give it as home Kali. The file name is keylog.log. So what this command does is, it exports the values in the SSL keylog file environmental variable into the keylog.log file. So the path for the keylog.log file is this. So we will see our working directory. So our working directory is the Kali directory under the home folder. So we will see the contents in the Kali directory. So you can clearly see that the keylog file is not there. The keylog file is generated when you open the web browser and start the communication. So normally we use Google Chrome for this. So when your browser start the communication with the web server, it generates the TLS session keys in the TLS handshake process. So these session keys are stored as the values in the environmental variable. So your browser does this every time, but it doesn't do anything else with these values once they are used. However, with the recent versions of Firefox and Chrome, we can output these values to a text file. Now with Linux, if we want to store the values for this environmental variable, we need to start the Google Chrome or Firefox through the same terminal. So if you type Google Chrome from this terminal, it will see the SSL keylog file variable and write to the specified file, that is to the keylog file. Now we will open another terminal and we are in the Kali directory, we will ls for the content and you can see the keylog file is there. So if you view the contents of the keylog file, you can see the secrets that is the session keys generated by the client and the server during the handshake process is listed there. So we will close the web browser. So it will terminate the process. So we will ls here. 
and the keylog.log file is there so we'll remove it we will ls again now the keylog.log file is no more there so the next step is to capture traffic of our web browser so we will open the google chrome browser through this terminal so we'll type google chrome and press enter so this will open the google chrome now we will open wireshark and we'll enable packet capturing now we'll go back to chrome and type so i have a separate server which works with tls 1.2 and we'll open the login for page for that it's 192.168.8.103 this is my server address so we'll enter the username as user and the password 1234 now we will stop the packet capturing so what we've done is we have opened the google chrome web browser from the terminal that we use for storing values for the ssl keylog file environmental variable and then we browse the login page of the web server which works with the tls 1.2 and we captured the packets through the wireshark now we'll see whether we have http related packets so this clearly shows us we do not have http packets and we will see whether we have any tls packets so we have tls packets so the client is starting the client hello and the communication handshake process was failed and there is another attempt so this is the successful attempt so the source address is 192.168.8.158 this is my web browser's address and it is sending the transmission to the destination 192.168.8.103 this is my web's first address and this is the initiation message for the tls handshake so the client is sending the client hello and in turn the server is responding with the server hello message with its certificate and the server key exchange details and the client is sending the client key exchange details which is the session key generated at the handshake process and the confirmation for the use of the session key for its future communication and this is the server's response for that so if you want to get more details about the tls handshake process you can watch my other video on tls 1.2 handshake process explained with wireshark in itsec hub so this is the very next message sent by the client to the server this is where we have typed the username and the password now if we select this message and go to transport layer security so we have the encrypted application data so in this pane you can clearly see all the data is encrypted anyone who intercept this message cannot read it so in order to convert this into plain text or to decrypt you should have the session key associated with this encryption so the session keys are with the ssl keylog file environmental variable as the values so these values were exported into keylog.log file so we will go to edit menu and go to preferences and then go to protocols so here we can go to tls under t so this is the tls so this is where that we can browse for the keylog file and provide it to the wireshark so once we provided it to the wireshark it will get the session keys and use it for the decryption of the captured packets so it is under the kali directory and here it is so we will open it and click on ok now there is a change 
the very next record after the key exchange details or the application data but here you can see another http record now when we filtered earlier for http there was no http record so we will filter for http again now you can see there are plenty of http records so these records were generated by the session keys extracted from the keylog.log file so this is the server's address if you click on this you can see the tls is decrypted and here you can see it's decrypted and reassembled decrypted again then reassembled decrypted and if you move to this record now you know if we have http the http traffic keys transmitted without encryption that is in plain text so this is the weakness in http now there's another video done by me to compare the http and the https traffic now if you click on this and go to html form url encoder you can see the username and the password so the username we have given is the user and the password it's 1234 so these are exposed by decrypting the https traffic using the session key generated at the tls handshake so the session key is stored in the keylog.log file and we have extracted it in wireshark so thank you for watching this video on decrypting https traffic with wireshark remember always ensure you have proper authorization and access rights before attempting to decrypt any network traffic if you found this video helpful Please like, share and subscribe to IT Sec Hub for more informative content. Stay ethical, stay legal and goodbye.